Okay, I'm making this video uh, to try to show you, that's you who is watching this video now, need to help. You need to help me and you need to help the whole campaign. And that is because the information that I'm trying to put out is definitely being suppressed. Now, what makes me think that? This is my YouTube channel. Uh, as you can see, it's now miraculously up to 3.52 thousand subscribers. Um, what's miraculous about that? Well, it's not a miracle, but within the space of the last week, that number of subscribers has increased by about 1,300. I've been, I've been bashing away for about 18 months and gradually clawed my way to about 2,000. Um, and then within the space of a week, we get an explosion of growth, but it is going to grind to a halt. Now, we need to stop that happening. We need to keep it growing. And this is why. So if you look at my channel and you go to videos and latest, you will see that today I've put out F1 fraud, truth versus script and Max crash carry on. Now, those of you that have seen them will understand what they relate to. Um, now, if we go to uh, popular, click on popular and we look at the videos that I've put out in the whole time. And now I've put out 421 videos now. The top ranked video is the one that I put out just over a week ago, seven days ago. And that has reached 80,000 views. Now, I'll go into the statistics of that and I'll do a, another video deeper. One video, 80,000 views, and it has added over 1,200, 1,300 subscribers to the channel, just a single video. Now, prior to that, the biggest video that I'd had in terms of viewers was 14,000 views, and that was a video that mentioned jo Johnny Herbert, and it was going through the Sky Sports presentation. That is far from, far from being anywhere near the, one of the better videos that I've done. And then because of this increased number of subscribers, uh, the video that I put out about Lewis Hamilton, the heartbeat of Formula One, which again exposes this uh, this Johnny Herbert video a bit, 10,000 views. The very first videos I ever did, uh, I think that was the very first one I ever did, 8,000 views. There are comments to that video saying this is probably the most important video released about Abu Dhabi. That was about 18 months ago, really. That was about November, December 2022 that that got released. And then we come down here. So we look at this list. 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. So a few have got to five and then we're down into the fours. OK. Um, and we can see here, we can see that I've analysed the Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen crash at Silverstone and seeing who was to blame. And so those that keep jumping up in the comment section about Silverstone, we can see the actual moment of the impact that I've broken down. OK, the actual moment of the impact where they're saying, oh, Lewis didn't hit the apex of the corner. Well, you see over here on the right hand side, that's called the curbing. That's not apex. That's called curbing. Max hits Lewis before the curbing starts. But people don't know that because they don't see it. Now, this is the problem. People don't see it. Now, going back here, 80,000 views, 14,000 views, 10,000 views, and then we're down to eight. Less than 10,000 views. That's on this channel with 3,500 subscribers. If I go on to another channel, a channel that I'm the supporter of, and if you look at the descriptions of my recent videos, you'll see that there are three linked channels. This is one of them. Fully supporting them. They um, have been bashing away for a long time, revealing a lot of truths. So if you've not checked their channel out, please do so. Please show their, show your support to them by subscribing to their channel too. I'm not competing with people for your attention. I want anybody that is able to expose the truth to be able to show people what the truth is. So NSNC. Uh, you can look at their popular videos, their recent videos. So if I click onto their popular videos, and this is a channel with just 1,500 subscribers at the moment, and we look at their top ranked video, well, that's got 32,000 views. Then we've got one that's got 30,000 views. 
Then we've got one with 28,000 views, then 21,000 views, 20,000 views, 19,000 views, 17,000 views, 17,000 views, 17,000 views, 16,000 views, 15,000 views, 14,000 views, 11, 10. So they've got 14 videos of their 152, which have got in excess of 10,000 views. And they're well worth watching. They are well worth watching. I've got three videos out of 421 with more than 10,000 views. And when certain people have described my videos as being some of the most important videos that people have ever seen about the reality of Abu Dhabi 2021, what is going on there? Right? What, what is going on there? So this one that's got 80,000 views. Surely those of you that have seen it and it's the first time you've seen it actually put out like that. Really showing you what is really happening. Well, 80,000 people have viewed it, and of those 80,000, many of them will have switched off within the first minute of it. So they actually won't have actually got to see what's really going on because they don't have the attention span. They'll have judged for themselves that within a few seconds, oh, yeah, no, oh, this is a load of crap because that is people. But just looking at, you know, let's, let's get this up here. Here's a calculator, and we'll cancel that, uh, that calculation off. 108 million people, 108.7 million people. So like before that, 80,000 people have seen my video about Abu Dhabi. 80,000. First of all, how many people follow Lewis Hamilton on uh, Instagram? Well, that's 30 million. So 80,000 people. But that is a proportion of Lewis Hamilton's followers on Instagram. And he's got 30. 30 million is what Lewis Hamilton has got. So we'll put as a percentage. So we'll times that figure there by 100. 0.26666% of people who follow Lewis Hamilton on Instagram have, have had the chance of seeing my video. 0.26%. And you wonder why the sport is getting away with it. Because nobody knows. And like I say, out of those 80,000, there's so many that won't actually know still because they didn't actually go on and see it. So 0 0.2 to 6. That's, that's like one in every 400 people. Right. So if you've got a crowd of 400 people and you're the only person within that crowd that knows something... How are you going to get the rest of them to understand it? How are you going to get the rest of them to see it? Especially when they all think they already know it. Because they've been told about it by someone who they believe. And they've been told it a certain way. And now they're just happy to accept that way. And who are you to tell them any different? Now, that's just the Lewis Hamilton Instagram followers. If we look at those who are actually uh, watched the race live. 80,000 people have seen my presentation. They won't all know it, but we'll use that figure. And that is a proportion of the 108.7 million global viewers. 108.7 million global viewers of the live Abu Dhabi race. It's a small number. So we'll times that by 100 to get a percent. 0.07%, okay, the seven hundredths of one percent, not even a tenth of a percent of people who watch that event have seen the presentation of what really went on. And yet YouTube, we get to 80,000 viewers and YouTube doesn't feel that it needs to show this video to the fans of Formula One. Rather strange, isn't it? Rather strange. Now, again, this this is the kind of numbers we're dealing with. And, and apparently, Formula One reports that um, we've got 500 million global followers of the sport of F1. What am I doing there? 
That's being optimistic, 800,000. It's only uh, 80,000 views so far that that video's got. 80,000 views of that video. And that is a proportion of 500 mil million global um, followers of the sport. Is that number there? And as a percentage, 0.016%. 16 thousandths of a percent of the global population have seen Abu Dhabi presented in the way I presented it. 16 one thousandths of one percent have had the chance of seeing that. And you wonder why the narrative is controlled. You wonder why more people aren't seeing how corrupt this is. It's because they don't get access to the information. Now, why is that? Why is that? Now, we come back to here. Right. This is my channel. I've been going for 18 months or so. This is what it's finally built up. And finally, we had a breakthrough with that BBC chief exposes video. Finally, we finally got somewhere, which is still effectively nowhere. Now, I'll take you through the analytics here. Um, this is, you can see here, keep it up. Your channel got 434% more views than usual in the last 28 days. That was due to the last seven days in the dropping of that video. How that video got to 80,000 people, I have no idea. I just got home from the gym, started talking in, into my laptop, made a video like I normally do. It got to 2 a.m. in the morning. I hit publish. And by the time I woke up in the morning, it had 8,000 views. I'd never seen it like that before. What happened? I don't know. All right. But if we go on to the analytics of that video, um, where am I looking now? Come down here. This is what has happened. All right. So we started off at zero. And let me just try and enlarge this so you can see. So you'll see, I'm not lying here. 2.15 is when I published it on the Wednesday. All right. 2.15. And then first few hours. you can see 8,000 views, all right? In the first six hours, I didn't, that, that's unheard of for any of my videos. And so within 24 hours, we're up to 20 odd thousand views. And now, you know, we're on Thursday. By the end of Thursday, we're at kind of 40 odd thousand views. But then, rather than getting 20 odd thousand a day, we're on to Saturday and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. And we're starting to level off. Starting to level off now. We've got to about 80,000 views. Why? When Lewis Hamilton has got 30 million followers. When there's a global audience that saw Abu Dhabi of 108.7 million. When there's a fan base of Formula One of 500 million. And this is information they all need to see. Why are there only 80,000 views? Now, again, in terms of monetization of that particular video, there's a slight lag. So this figure may slightly increase because I think this is... Uh, how much it had earned as of either yesterday or the day before. So that would have been at this point here. So it's done most of its earning so far. Whatever has happened here on these few views here might add a little bit to that. But that, that video has made £284 in advertising revenue. So that might creep up to 300 320 at some point. But it just shows you that... A video that has got 80,000 views, and let's use the figure, nice round figure of 300 pounds, 80,000 views, 300 quid. So if it makes, sorry, if it's viewed by 800,000 people, you get three grand out of that, approximately. 
Okay, it's, it's, it's not an exact science because I guess it depends on how many adverts are displayed during that video, how long people watch for to see how many adverts then pop up. So it's not an exact science, but you can make generalities in that regard. All right, but all it takes is for a couple of videos to go big like that and you're at the 10 grand and we've got what we need to then go to court. Not a problem. We'll beat them with the money generated by exposing them. All right, that is what's going to happen. So I can't do this on my own. I can make the content, I can put it out there, but where it then goes, I don't have any control over. Right, I really don't. What YouTube does in terms of who it shows it to, I've got no control over that. Now, let me just show you what I've tried to do so that you understand where I'm coming from and the limitations that I have. So, well before taking to YouTube in what must have been either the January or the February of 2022, because prior to be, be even campaigning on Facebook, I firstly tried to contact Sky Sports F1, the FIA, the sport of Formula One. And when I was getting no answers, I then tried to contact other mainstream media to get mainstream media to expose the corruption that wasn't being exposed by that sport and by Sky Sports F1. I got nowhere at all, which is then when I had to take to social media to try to expose it on there. So I set up a dedicated Facebook page to try and expose the truth. And I wrote probably in excess of 100 articles. Some of them are ridiculously long. You can scroll right down to the bottom of where those articles start. And what is listed there is the emails or some of them that I actually emailed to Sky Sports F1 and then to other forms of media. It's all evidenced. It's there for everyone to see all that I did, even becoming uh, even before starting on Facebook. And then you can see what I've gone through on Facebook, the evolution, the development of knowledge, because you'll see where I've made mistakes along the way. All right. But you'll see how the situation has evolved and how our understanding has evolved. And the way that that understanding has evolved is through uh, repeatedly looking at what the situation is, listening to different people's perspectives on the situation. And gradually we are building a clearer picture. So there is merits to doing this and there's merits to the time it's taking, because as the time goes by, we are seeing a clearer and clearer picture and the input that people have by Sharing the, the insight that they have is invaluable. OK, not the strap on fanboy. Your your insight isn't OK. Yours is easily dismissible. Keep coming at us because you never know. You never know. It does occasionally cause me to challenge myself and challenge my thinking. OK, but, you know, most of what you come out with is nothing. But those of you that are able to contribute with good insight, that does add to the big picture. And that is key, really key. You'll see there, 2.6 thousand followers. That was at 2.7 thousand followers at one point. And what I do, I post. And since um, since taking to YouTube, the number of posts that I've put on here has decreased because my focus is now on YouTube, making videos as opposed to writing articles. Now, the... BBC video, the one that's got 80,000 views, I posted on this page, which has got a following of 2,600 people. So 2,600 sorry, 2,600 people should have got a Facebook notification that there's a new post from me. Maybe have a look at this. All right, so I posted on there. Check out this video. Have a look at it. All right. Seven reactions. Seven reactions. OK, seven reactions of which one of them um, is the laughing face emoji. So, you know, those of you who are just here to troll, OK, just here to ridicule, just here to tell me to cry more, to move on already, to laugh, to sneer, to tell me that it's ridiculous. Oh, this is all new to me. I've never experienced any of that before. Yeah, not for an entire year prior to even being on uh, YouTube. No, no, no. I'd not experienced any of that. I'd not experienced any trolling, any vileness, any abuse. You wouldn't know what I've actually gone through for that first year on Facebook. 
but I've got screenshots. I've got screenshots of the abuse that I've received. And guess what? The abuse that I've received, there's evidence of that somewhere too. I wonder where. I wonder where. Anyway, you look at that post. Five comments, 76 shares. Let's have a look at the shares. Okay, so there's me sharing it because I can't share it to the groups that I'm a part of from my own, uh, sorry, from this page. I have to share it from my own profile. So uh, we can go down the shares. We've got, um, right, shared to the F1 Ethics and Oversight Committee. Okay, so we've got some comments there. This one, the F1 2022 discussion group. Your post is pending. Uh, next one. Aston Martin, Aramco, Formula One team. Your post is pending. Aston Martin fan zone. No reactions. F1, fans of Sir Lewis Hamilton in Belgium. Your post is pending. Lewis Hamilton lovers. No reactions. Lewis Hamilton, king of F1. No reactions. Lewis Hamilton, Al H44. Your post is pending. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, fans South Africa. No reactions. Who's getting to see this post? Lewis Hamilton fan club. Your post is pending. Scuderia Ferrari F1 fans. No reactions. Who's getting notified of this? Formula One fans UK. Your post is pending. Lifting the veil on global corruption. Loving Lewis only. Two reactions. Nine views. Lewis Hamilton fans, the official group. One reaction. Uh, Planet F1. One laughing face emoji. Uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton, uh, whatever group that is, your post is pending. Williams F1 team, your post is pending. Lewis Hamilton group. No reactions, but one share. Uh, Formula One. Your post is pending. This is what happens. Real Lewis Hamilton fans. No reactions. Who is seeing these posts? Oh, this one. Four reactions. Couple of comments. Four reactions. Sorry, five reactions. Couple of comments. No reactions. Who is actually getting to see it? Now, if I go on to my personal page, this is the notifications. So I've got notifications that just 12 hours ago, and bearing in mind I shared this about four days ago, one of these groups has now approved the post. We've got a notification that some fat lad on a go-kart has responded with a laughing face emoji. Thanks for that, old, old lad. Um, and then we've got um, some Christopher Mullins shared my uh, post in Lewis Hamilton group. Thank you, Christopher. I appreciate that. And then we've got an admin approved my post, 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 an admin declined my post in Sir Lewis Hamilton, super legend of F1. Now, why would you do that? I'm presenting you with information clearly showing that Lewis Hamilton was robbed was defrauded and a pro Lewis Hamilton page has declined the post. An admin declined my post in Lewis Hamilton's finest. An admin declined my post in Lewis Hamilton's finest. See their feedback. An admin approved my post. Your post was removed from Mercedes AMG Patronus by an admin. Your admin your post was approved. Your admin, sorry, an admin declined your post in Lewis Hamilton F1. These are supposedly Lewis Hamilton groups declining posts, declining to publish information to its followers of its page. And some of these pages have got hundreds of thousands of followers. And they're declining to publish information. Now, what's going on? Does the sport of Formula One reach out to these admins of these pages and go, oh, we need to remove the toxicity in Formula One. So we need to we need to move away from Abu Dhabi now. So if anybody still wants to be banging on about Abu Dhabi, let's just try and 
um, move away from that. And, and, you know, actually, because you're such a valuable uh, Formula One page, we'll give you some tickets to um, some of these Grand Prix. We'll give you some tickets to Silverstone and you can have a lovely time. Um, and we'll, uh, well, actually, we'll let you on to, into the paddock so you can go up and down the paddock area at Silverstone. That'd be great, wouldn't it? I wonder, is, that, is, is this how it works? An admin declined my post in Formula One official fan group. An admin declined my post in Sir Lewis Hamilton forever. <sighs> F1, SOS, save our sport as five new posts. So that's what's going on. That is what's going on. YouTube isn't showing my videos to Formula One's audience. Okay. 80,000 people. How it got there, I don't know. Right. How how the new subscribers got that information, how they got that recommended to them, I don't know. Because I've been doing this for 18 months and that might have been the first time you've seen anything from me. I'm doing it on Facebook. I've been doing it for over well, a year prior to starting on YouTube. I built up a following of 2,700 people. I now get seven reactions. So is Facebook notifying those 2,600 people that I'm making posts and I'm still producing evidence and now doing it in video format because just seven reactions from an audience of 2,600 people is rather strange. Rather strange. So I can't do this on my own. I cannot do this on my own. I need people to help. I need you to help. I need you to do what you can do to spread the information. When things get viral spread, it is when individuals share things. And those people that then see it, share that. And the more times that that happens, the greater the spread. That is what needs to happen. I cannot achieve that on my own and I need you. All right. Now, there's various things that I see and they basically um, they mean a lot to me. They mean a lot to me, both in sport and in life. And um, it reminds me of the things that that are important and why we all need to do this. So I'm just going to play you this. He sacrificed being a world champion to help his brother Cross the line. So it's not necessarily, don't worry about the world champion. When most of us will never be world champions, okay? Never, most of us will never be world champions, but it's not just about being a world champion. So that was um, Johnny Brownlee. And this is his brother, Alistair. And this is the lad that won. Then won. And he's an elite world athlete. Fair play to him. And he's now achieved something that, you know, would have probably been a life, well, I'd say lifelong dream, certainly a career ambition as soon as he, be, he took up triathlon. Fair enough. So that man got his brother home. He got his brother home. I think we all need to assess our values. Focus. What really matters in life. Anyway, thank you for your time.